speaker today is an award-winning writer, public speaker, and an international serial entrepreneur and marketing expert to multiple online and offline businesses. Virtualpreneurs, our speaker, is a, is a serial entrepreneur, Coach Carla Singson. Hi, Coach. Welcome to the Hi, summit. Hi, guys. <laughs> so great to be here again. Uh, Coach, uh, you're an international uh, entrepreneur of online offline businesses. How's your business going despite the fact that we're affected by, uh, there's a COVID-19 outbreak? Right. So it's, it's pretty, um, personally, I'm okay because financially, uh, I've started a, a different businesses. So even if there's no pandemic, there's actually some time, some of my businesses are seasonal. And uh, there, there is a time when one business would have so much uh, sales uh, at this specific season, um, and then the others will not have as much. And then there's also time when the others, you know, so it's, you know, it's, it's, it's very seasonal. We're not like SM, we're not a big mall where mm -hmm. sales are always going any time of the year. In fact, even malls have a season they buy, uh, during mm -hmm. December, everyone here in the Philippines has a 13th month pay or a Christmas bonus. Mm -hmm. So more people go to the malls and they have sales and they're very busy. Um, in January, mall sales are low. So you will see a lot of uh, sale. 50% off, everything must go every January, no? Gyms are slow during December, they don't care. <laughs> uh, but gyms are very high January to February because mm -hmm. people know that they, uh, that they went a little bit off during the Christmas and vacations and they wanna get back to their body and the New Year's resolution, you know, something like that. So I think for, for the people who know me, they know that one of my uh, oldest businesses is event planning. So I have an event planning office in Davao in the Philippines and in 2019, I recently expanded this business in Las Vegas, Nevada. So unfortunately with the, with the outbreak, you know, um, my business, uh, my events business is really taking a huge hit. Um, for one, my business in Las Vegas, we have to temporarily close. Uh, we are keeping a very skeletal staff online to service all of our existing clients, which will have their event second half of 2020. So that's okay, I would say, because we're not losing money. But unfortunately, we had to let some people go. So in Vegas, my teammates said that it's really empty. It's like a ghost town. And it's not just my business. You know, the entire industry is suffering, the travel industry. Hotels mm -hmm. have been laying off a lot of people. In the Vow, uh, in the Philippines, I mean, so my events business in the Philippines is nationwide. We have uh, in Manila, in Cebu, and in Davao, but our main headquarters is in Davao. I would say it's really taking a big hit. We have uh, one, can we have like three actually canceled events, and then there's no inquiries, there's nothing for events mm -hmm. for the rest of the year. But uh, I'm pretty lucky because my events company is not just an events company. We're an events and PR agency. So we do mm -hmm. PR campaigns. We do promotional campaigns, social media campaigns as well for all of our clients, big and small. And what I have uh, against the other social media companies is we have clients that are uh, really big in terms of um, helping them with their PR campaigns. We have Air Asia, you know, Sony. Mm -hmm. Uh, the big nonprofits such as United Nations. So that part of the business is not suffering, but you know the events business is really, really um, taking a hit. The others are fine. Um, it seems like it's not really affected. My online businesses are doing great actually, and my flower shop is doing a little slow. But you know you can't stop people from celebrating their birthdays, and you can't stop people True. from making True. their loved ones smile, especially mm. now they feel down, the right? So uh, sending someone flowers is actually a good idea right now to cheer someone up. Correct. Yeah, that's a good business. So is, uh, is the COVID-19 uh, outbreak challenge you to change any of your existing uh, operation standards or it's always the same? I would definitely, it really challenged me. First of all, it's my first time in my whole life to lay off employees. Oh God, oh, okay. it feels like shit. It's my first time because before when I was struggling in my business, I would pawn off my things 
just mm -hmm. so I can make the salary for the next month. But right now, it's a different story because it's not just money. You have to see where the industry is going. And for our Las Vegas uh, business, you really can see that there's no business coming in, I don't know, mm -hmm. for at least three months, I would say, right? So mm -hmm. it's very hard for me to make that commitment. Plus, um, American salaries are way more expensive than Philippine salaries. So, you know, I can't just, I can't just uh, hope for the best. Um, mm -hmm. Another big adjustment that, so that was really heavy for me. Another big adjustment that I had to do was that I needed to develop more products and services that people will always buy, even if they don't have a lot of money. So I'm, I'm um, in prep, it's, it's going to be a little, in my events and PR company, it's going to be just a little bit of detour because we already do a lot of social media campaigns, but then, you know, right now we are pushing it more. Um, and, you know, I, I learned from people like you, Ruben, you've been a veteran in uh, social media and uh, digital marketing. So I'm very happy that I also have the best support around me. Um, so providing, so number two, it would be that. Uh, number one is I learned how to uh, I, I learned new things in handling difficult conversations, I would say, <laughs> when I was laying off my people. Um, number, so that made me uh, emotionally stronger. Mm -hmm. Number two, I, I began to exercise uh, more into developing products and services that people will always need and always buy. So I think that's pretty good as well. Number three, I have trained my people and myself to respond faster. So, you know, in, uh, you know, in the Darwinian theory, he says the survival of the fittest. Yeah. So the survival in the economy, it's the survival of the, of the richest or of the strongest, you know, uh, it's, how you, it's how you translate it to the economy. But at the same time, you really see that the people who survive are those who adapt very easily uh, and very fast. So one example is, let's say, I have, my, my flower shop is pretty small. I have like three delivery people, but let's say I'm a very big flower shop and I have, let's say 20 delivery people. So I can't always push for people to buy flowers all the time at this time, because some of them might actually want to hold on to their money, but I can shift my team into a grocery delivery service or a medicine delivery service or a service for the elderly because they can't go out, you know, so that pivot the quick shift and quick thinking and always being on my wits about uh, what products or services can we offer depending on how the market will uh, react. So that is also a huge, huge realization for me. Speed is really, really important in uh, building your business. Now, uh, the main reason that we, we started this initiative is we want to help local and small businesses, businesses who are directly affected by the COVID-19 outbreak. Uh, you, you, as a veteran in this industry, PR marketing, do you have any uh, list of strategies that they can employ right now during the uh, to to be able to just at least survive this season? Yeah, well, there, there's a few ideas that I have. Um, for one, um, if you you should actually encourage your friends and family to buy from you or their other friends and family members who are suffering right now. I guess that should be number one. That would be the ultimate show of your Bayanihan spirit. Um, buying gift certificates, uh, buying gifts in advance, um, even especially God, especially the restaurants that are suffering right now, the small, mm. a lot of small business owners um, have restaurants and the, the, the overhead for restaurants are really high. Um, and if the restaurants are closed, you know, or um, they can't easily shift into a delivery service, then it's going to be very hard for them to weather this. So I would say number one is, uh, one strategy is to sell gift certificates for your products and services mm -hmm. because they can claim it at a future time, and but you can get the money now. At the same time, you get to help your friends and family keep their businesses afloat. Number two is I would preload a lot of content on my social media and or on your website. If you don't have a website, now is the perfect time to create a website. Maybe you can approach Ruben 
Ruben is a veteran in this industry. He makes a lot of amazing websites. And uh, he's actually 10 times, 100 times better than me <laughs> in this <digital> marketing. <laughs> so you should talk to Ruben, okay? Um, um, and then uh, get a website right now. Uh, your website is your 24-7 brochure. So even if your actual shop is closed, people can search about your opening hours, what services do you, uh, what, uh, what products or services you offer, and maybe even send inquiries through a contact form or an email. So that's mm -hmm. another uh, way. Preload content on your social media. So if you're the kind of person who tries to DIY your marketing and you're the owner, but you're the only one posting, for your social media platforms, you should now write all of the content maybe for the rest of the year. And then you can preload uh, pre it because the way the Facebook algorithm works is the more you post, the more that Facebook actually rewards you for being active on your uh, platform and then the more that they'll give you uh, traffic. Besides, if your Facebook page looks alive, um, it's also, it makes the, the other people more think that you're trustworthy and makes them buy from, consider to buy from you. So for example, uh, you have this business and right now it's March, but your last post was July, 2019. What will people think? People will think you're closed, right? People yeah. like, oh, you know what? Let's just not go to that place because it looks like their Facebook is not updated. Their reviews are from three years ago, you know? So load it up with content, ask your friends for reviews, you know, make it look alive, okay? And number three, I would say number three things that you, third thing that you can do is develop new offers. So one of the things that will work badly for you, even if you're a good salesperson or, uh, is uh, having bad offers, you know? So uh, let me give you an example. So what if I'm selling this notebook and if I sell you this notebook, I'll give you a free, um, let's say face powder. So it's, it's weird because it's not connected. So it's a, it's a bad offer, right? But if I sell this notebook and I give you a free pen, then it's a better offer, right? That's so it, let's say I'm a very good salesperson and Ruben is, for example, is an okay salesperson. I'm dying to sell you this, this, this package, but Ruben is selling you a pen and a notebook, which makes more sense, which is a way better offer. So even if he's a, an okay salesman, he will always beat the good salesman because his offer is better. So right now, I would encourage you to make better offers. Um, look at what offers you have now, maybe create combo packages, create a loyalty discounts, you know, make better offers. So I would really, really devote my time on that. In fact, I have a, I actually have a special, um, 30 day business sprint that's very cheap that I'm going to offer very soon. Mm -hmm. And it's really just to help small business owners uh, improve their business during this lockdown time. Wow, that's good. You should inform us when it will open so that we can promote it also. Oh really? Okay, I will say so, yeah. I didn't want to I didn't want to hijack your show. Okay. So no, no worries. <laughs> I, I think the purpose of this show is for us to be able to give uh, information to the people who need it the most. And since you opened it up, can you share us share more information about the, uh, the sprint? And okay. when are you opening it? And how can they avail it? Okay, so uh, thank you so much. I, this is my cheapest, cheapest in my whole life, my <laughs> cheapest program, because I really want it to be cheap for Filipinos. So it's only a dollar a day, uh, $30. Wow. Yes, I know. Um, uh, it's so I can afford my rice. Just kidding. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, it's it's a dollar a day, uh, thirty dollars one month. So it's going to start on April one to thirty, and Monday to Friday there's going to be workshops that will make you improve your business, and you have a task to do by the end of the day. And every Saturday is devoted to self work Saturdays or hashtag self work Saturdays, which is self improvement and motivation and inspiration. And Sundays wow. is rest. And I have a special prize. So you have a task from Monday to Friday. Saturday is optional. Um, if you finish all of the tasks from day one to day thirty, I'm going to consult with you for thirty minutes, uh, one on one, and I'm gonna, I'm going to invest some money in your business. So 
Wow, it's a yeah, survival game. <laughs> I know. <laughs> you know um, so it's not gonna it's not gonna be a lot of money. It's probably like five thousand pesos, you know. But um, I yeah, let's do that. I'll, I'll give five thousand pesos. I haven't really perfected the program, but at this point, but I'll give five thousand pesos to help you grow your business. Maybe pay for some Facebook ads, something, mm. and you can pay me back. Uh, after a while and uh, you know and I'll help you promote it and and that's it but for you to qualify for that price you have to do the tasks every day and you have to show evidence that you actually did it so um, the worst wow. case scenario the worst case scenario is you don't do any of the tasks but you have access to this Facebook group and the lessons forever so um, after the 30 days we will have probably two weeks of processing uh, you know, reviewing, what did you learn, blah, blah, blah. And then after that, I'm going to leave the group. So, but you can stay in the group and you can, you can stay there. And I will not be offering any upsell because I, I told myself that I'm going to take a break from coaching. But I, I feel like at this time, there's so many businesses that are suffering. Like if my business yeah. is, is, is taking a hit and I'm making, uh, I, I made more than, you know, 10 million for the past two years and how much more the other people, mm. right? So uh, I'm making this program really cheap and really easy for, for small business owners in the Philippines. It's only a dollar a day, $30. Let's work together for one month. It's actually really me. I will not be um, delegating the work to a VA. Me. Yeah, it's actually me. So it's going to be exciting. I'm going to meet a lot of people, a lot of business people that uh, I will love working with, I think. Virtual entrepreneurs, I'm definitely <laughs> sure that this is one of the... Uh, the best trainings that you've attended you, you can attend because i've attended one training myself you should attend this event and for them to be able to join well where should they contact who should, who should they contact right so um all they can do is go to my page carla singson k-a-r-l-a singson and i will make it a pin post there i'll, I'll probably make the announcement on march 24 so I have six days to market it, and there's only 100 seats in the program. So wow, limited seats, 100 only. Yeah, because and it's a only dollar me. a day. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> it's like nothing. Yeah. So literally, this is just your community outreach for all of the local and small businesses affected. But yeah, know. definitely. I mean, uh, what? You know, any business can fork out thirty dollars or one thousand five hundred pesos uh, yes. to get coaching for a month, and yeah. I think that's a really, you know, I think it's kind of a crazy offer. But I think this is my chance to also help out because last year I was in the U.S. most of the time, and I wasn't really able to. I, I didn't do any coaching. I wasn't able to, except for that one time when I sold a seven dollar class, and one hundred percent went to the victims of the earthquake in Mindanao mm -hmm. so that was the only time I did something so I, I miss teaching and I miss talking to uh, Filipinos and at this time you know I'm very happy that there are people like you I know you Ruben are also pretty busy with your businesses and you're probably getting a lot of leads right now but you're also spending time trying to help your fellow men so I, I really like that thank you very much Carla no Carla uh for, for people to be able, or for entrepreneurs, founders, to be able to maximize their time during this season, what would you like to suggest to them? Or what should there be their action plans aside from learning? Do you have any other tips? Um, even if you, one thing that will probably change your life if you're a business owner right now is talking to a mentor. Consulting. Talking to someone, pay for one hour of their time. You know, it doesn't matter. I know a lot of you guys who are watching this one are looking up to Ruben as well or looking up to me or looking up to someone who you consider is your mentor you want to learn from. Um, you know, approach them and ask them how much is one hour uh, of their consulting and ask them all of your questions. Don't waste your time. So you have to list down your questions. So you have to list down your agenda. And just get on a talk with them. You know, it's like it's like the the online version of I want to pick your brain and take you out for coffee, but you don't want to waste this person's time. Um, what would we? So why I think that would be the most important thing that you should do right now is it gives you a third party perspective of what you've been doing with your business. Um, it gives you insights from someone who is ahead of you. Uh, and at the same time, because you're on lockdown, you're in quarantine, you, whatever your mentor tells you to do, 
you have time to plan for it. You have time to execute it. You know, you have time to to even reflect on it, right? You write it down, you reflect on it. You, If you're religious, you have time to pray for it, to ask for ask God for a sign, you know? So I think that would be the number, number one thing that I would really encourage you to do. Sure, you can read books, you can watch videos, but really talking to a mentor or a consultant and who will give you their uh, their input about what you're doing. And it's custom, custom input. It's not... You know, whatever you find kasi on books and YouTube is very generic. It's not specifically true, for true. you, you know. So, uh, talking to a consultant or a mentor would really, really be the best ROI, I would say, at this time. Carlo, they would say, getting a mentor is expensive. How would you react to that? It's more expensive to, to stumble through the dark. <laughs> Trust me. <laughs> and to fail. <laughs> yes. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, so it's funny because people, uh, you know, I can't afford a mentor right now, but you, you tell them, but can you afford not to? Really, you know, it's, it, it doesn't even have to be a consultant or a guru, or it doesn't have to be me or Ruben, you know. What if you have an uncle who is very wise in business, you know, talk right. to him. What if you have an elder sister who is kind of successful at business and every time your parents will be short for money, you always ask from your sister, well, maybe your sister knows something a little bit more than you in terms of business, right? Yes, yes, so it yes. doesn't, uh, or an old classmate from business school that you always thought was smart and was witty. You mm -hmm. know, of course, you have to respect their time. You have to ask them how much or what would it take for them to, to help you out. You know, you can't just expect for them to help you for free. But um, any, any mentor, um, you know, you, you can start somewhere. And you might actually be surprised how how uh, some people or some mentors will give you their time for free just because they want to help you out. True, true, true. I, I've met several of them actually. Yeah. And most of them would just be willing to answer all of your questions. I even met some of them in LinkedIn. Literally, you just ping them, then literally they reply. What, yeah. One of the, those moments was uh, when I was able to uh, talk to Brian Pasco. The other one was with uh, uh, Larry Kim. Mobile uh, survey, yeah, mobile monkey, and of course during the, your event, right? <laughs> very, 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 also very. He was very generous. Yeah, he was yeah. very awesome guy. He was really generous in giving advice, tips, and I e was even able to formulate all of my details on a pro on a on a uh, probable product in the future because of your event. Awesome! So, oh my god! So, yeah, mm. I'm excited for our call too, so, our one on one. <laughs> Yes, definitely. But uh, I'm really thankful that you really spared your time for this one to really help uh, all the other local and small businesses out there. Do you have any message to all the local business and small businesses out there? Oh, I would say that to all the local business owners, small business owners, I know that it's a little hard for you right now. Um, you have to make a lot of hard decisions. In fact, I actually sold some of my items in the office that we're not using <laughs> because I, I want to cut down on my expenses. Um, it's temporary, you know, it's temporary. And um, do you know that the biggest millionaires in America were actually built after the Great Depression? And um, there's a quote that says, when there's a lot of uh, chaos, there's also a lot of opportunity. So I want you to be relentlessly optimistic. Keep your head above your shoulders. You know, um, just do your work with integrity and everything will be fine. It, the, it, the world is not as bad as you think and people will always reward good people who solve problems. And that's why um, in fact, if you see, um, the, I saw on Google a few days ago, um, it was a rich, uh, uh, sorry, a list of billionaires with their businesses and what percentage of their wealth what came from a certain business. So there's Jeff Bezos, Amazon, but he owns other businesses, right? He owns Audible, he owns uh, Ring, he owns uh, Whole Foods now, he owns Whole Foods, right? So yeah, right. he made X amount of money from Amazon. So you can see where these billionaires made their money. There was Mark Cuban, you know, famous mm -hmm. billionaires in dollars, a billions. That's a lot of money. So you will see that the billionaires are actually solving a huge problem for the most number of people. So that's really what wealth is, you know, it's solving problems for, for people. So it's the same as business, you know, small 
uh, all businesses started small. Henry C., um, one of the billionaires in the Philippines, um, started with a small uh, shoe repair shop. And now he owns the biggest malls in Asia. So everyone starts small. There's no shame in starting small. And, you know, um, just keep working hard and, and, and hire the right people and surround yourself with good people. So this is very temporary. The pandemic is temporary. This is not, this is against human nature to keep us isolated. We'll definitely still go out and see each other soon. So stay positive. Wow. <laughs> but not Corona positive. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much to our international serial virtual entrepreneur, Carla Singson, for joining the summit. I hope the priceless tips we were able to learn from Coach Carla can move us through these hard times. Thank you, Coach Carla. Virtual entrepreneurs, live the great life. Thank you.